the Among Us potion from the dark web. And supposedly, when you drink this Among Us potion at 3 a.m., you turn into the imposter from Among Us. All right. Let's get into it. The Soulsborne Sekiro series, or however you want to call that name, has been going on for a while now. And as time goes on, more and more people discover these games. And recently, in record-breaking fashion, Elden Ring has brought in thousands of new players to discover the series. And usually, after beating Elden Ring, they'll start asking around, like, oh, I really enjoyed that. Which other ones should I play? And always, people will point them straight into the direction of the Dark Souls trilogy. However, what I find extremely interesting is that when all these newcomers ask what should I play next, I have never seen anyone online say to them, oh yeah, and after that, maybe you should also check out Sekiro. It's something that really makes me think, like so many people just seem to forget that Sekiro exists. And I find that to be such a shame, really. So the question becomes this, why doesn't anyone play Sekiro anymore? Because maybe it's not a coincidence that this one has been seemingly forgotten. Maybe there really is something here which just doesn't grab people like the other Souls entries. I'm assuming like a lot of you out there, I've not touched this game in like one or two years. So in this review, I'm going to be going back and having a big, big talk about this game because I have plenty to say. But first, it's time for Ever Legion Arena. Oh my gosh, is that the new funny, funky 3D idol RPG with more than 100 heroes across seven different factions to collect? No way. I have a soft spot for idol RPGs, especially ones that support offline progression. You can play it anywhere, anytime, like right now when you're watching a YouTube ad or when you're at your divorce counseling because you play too much Ever Legion. Honey, please put down the phone. I'm trying to work on our marriage. No, you will never understand that I have 25 free summons just for completing the tutorial. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I just got Garzak. He's like a triple S tier, god tier S hero, capable of tanking everything in the game. But that's not all, let me show you my hero collection. You could never collect more heroes than me, you pathetic worm. My, my favorite hero is Alexius, who can control the powers of thunder and lightning to decimate the battlefield. Him and my new Garzak are now best friends, amazing. Plus, there's so many new and different gameplay modes, like the new Dragon Abyss, adding an epic Dragon Egg as a reward. What's in the Dragon Egg? Oh my goodness, it's Ever Legion, introducing its most difficult boss yet with the Pilferer's Blitz, giving out huge rewards. So support the channel by joining me in playing Ever Legion using my link below or the QR code on screen. And don't forget to use my exclusive redeem code EL Lenny to get five free extra summons and more. There's only 100 of those, so first come, first served, you greedy boy. So thank you, Ever Legion, for sponsoring this video. Alright, well, to be honest, I didn't want to start this review at the most obvious point, but I feel like I just have to here because it is the front and centre of the game, and this is going to be a long section, so bear with me. Sekiro's combat, as I'm sure many of you are well aware, is very, very unique and very different. This comes in two parts. Firstly, enemies now don't have the traditional health bars. Instead, they have a health and posture bar. This means you have two ways of killing your opponents, either by draining their entire health bar or by filling up the posture meter and delivering a critical attack, completely ignoring any remaining health and just killing outright. This is expanded upon with bosses which have multiple health bars and as such need multiple critical attacks to defeat. Now what makes this very, very different from other Souls entries is that it is actually very rare to get a normal health drain kill. You are very much more likely to perform a critical attack before that ever happens. This is because although enemy posture bars can recover, unlike health, the more health bar damage they have taken, the easier the posture bar is to fill up and maintain. This means that usually about halfway into the fight, the posture meter is probably already full without ever trying to go for it and you get the kill like that. So then how do you fill up this posture bar? Secondly, on the combat, is attacking and deflecting. Attacking works like before where you can just press the R1 button for like 8 hours a day, it's all cool. But then we've got some big changes to the player's defensive options. Sekiro is all about deflecting attacks rather than dodging. A deflect is a timed block which negates any incoming damage, assuming you timed it correctly, and also fills up the attacker's posture bar just a little bit. Now there are situations or attacks that you want to be dodging, but 
ideally you want to be parrying every single attack you see because of the huge benefits it provides the idea of ideally parrying every attack you see is also developed further down the line as later upgrades turn your normal dodge and jump into parries themselves sorry i had to explain the basics of sakiro to people who know what it's all about i just wanted to get everyone on the same page before i talk my talk all of this obviously is incredibly important but why is that it's because it changes the entire and i mean the entire feel and tempo of every single fight. The best comparison I could ever make is to once again refer to Dark Souls. The Souls series are the types of games to reward a very consistent player. Now you don't have to be perfect, but really, as long as you're playing pretty good for a pretty long time, you'll usually end up winning the fight. Now Sekiro is the exact opposite. Rather than having to play consistent for a full five minutes, it's all about just playing that perfect 30 seconds, 20 seconds. As long as you play it perfectly, no matter if the boss's health bar is full or not, you can just parry every attack perfectly and can make a comeback at any time. A good example I'm sure many of you can relate to is that in Dark Souls, you're fighting a boss and you've only got their health bar down halfway, but you've only got like one Estus left. So it's like, yeah, th this kill's not happening. I'm just gonna reset. And that's because those games reward consistency and you weren't consistent. You did not save enough healing to provide the rest of the kill. But in that situation, in Sekiro, it doesn't matter if you have one Estus left. You can still play that perfect 20 seconds or so at any point and the game will reward you for that the game wants you to do that it wants you to feel that you can be perfect for that little bit and it makes you feel like an absolute god and it's why a lot of us would agree that this is the best souls combat full stop with all that being said it does bring up sakiro's first stumble rewarding and encouraging perfection is very, very hard. I'm sure many of you have found that Sekiro has the most challenging learning curve to get into. Now for some, it's an absolute treat because it's something completely unique and something completely new for you to learn all over again. But then for a lot more people than you probably think, it can turn them off the game right away. I am sure many people watching this video right now who are massive Souls fans still haven't got around to beating this game. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that those guys suck or anything. I, I'm just saying the game is set up in that way. So then the question is, why does this game need to be that hard? If you copy and paste a Souls boss into this, they will get their cock slapped off. You have to remember that the player's defensive option of the deflect is undeniably, incredibly overpowered. So beating Sekiro is all about learning the deflect. And as such, the game needs to keep evolving and keep changing enemy movesets. Because of course, at the start of the game, it's normal attack patterns and you smash everyone's cock off. But then the game's like, okay, we have to make things harder as the game goes on. So therefore, you just, it just keeps ramping up. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you're the person getting their cock slapped off because now the enemies have five or seven long combos with slight variations and slight delays. This then brings up the conclusion which many people have come to that Sekiro is a cleverly disguised rhythm game. Sekiro is all about seeing this new enemy with a new rhythm pattern and then being able to smash the deflect button in time with that new rhythm. And you build up all these different rhythms until you just got them memorized. And that point of view is a really fun one to make and it's really hard to dispute, to be honest with you. But again, it proves why this game needs to be hard because you learn the first few rhythms in the game very quickly and you don't fucking forget it. It's drilled into your head like a rhythm game. So then the game needs to keep giving you new rhythms but they need to be harder rhythms they need to keep going and going until you end up with something just way too hard for some on the other end of that this is absolutely why many of us who beat Sekiro go back and do a second playthrough and then we just utterly annihilate the game in like two or three hours it's just because we've got all those rhythms memorized in our head now we're like drilled in we can't forget them so thinking about all we discussed there for the people who find this game too hard, the steep learning curve will definitely turn them off. And for those people who love this game, although that first playthrough is absolutely dynamite, undeniably, you could never play the game in that same way again, because you've got all the rhythms like memorized now. There's no way to forget that. This is maybe the first reason why I consider not that many people recommend Sekiro because those who struggled found a very alienating experience and those who beat it 
don't really play it anymore because it offers almost zero replayability. I know this is a bit of an iffy point to make because, like, don't get me wrong, I cannot understate how amazing that first play is. It is 120% worth it just for that. But in the interests of actually answering the title of this video, I think that unreplayability is a very fair point to bring up. Before we close this very long section of the video, there is one last point I want to bring up on the subject of replayability. A lot of people, myself included, thought that Sekiro was gonna get like an extra weapon or two. One thing that I probably should have mentioned a lot earlier is that there are no extra weapons in Sekiro. It's all just a katana. That's it. Now again, for some people, this is yet another reason why this game lacks replayability. Because with Elden Ring, you can come back to it and say, okay, this time I'm gonna like try and make a PvP build, or okay, this time I'm gonna make a Faith Scythe build, and every time it'll be a new experience. I do see this point. However, I have to shut it down immediately because this game, to be the way it is, needs one weapon. Although, yeah, it can be a bit samey, having the same moveset and the same one attack and the same one dodge, whatever. I think there's something to be said about taking that one weapon, that one single attack speed, that one single moveset, and then just sculpting everything in your game around it. The reason why this game is just so spot on is that it is all just laser focused bam smack on that one single moveset it would be impossible to have this level of cutting accuracy here if this game had to balance this combat around four different movesets no so yeah although it does suck that the game offers not much replayability in my opinion i guess it's just the price you have to pay for having a game this accurate and again, I really don't want anyone watching this to get me wrong here. I cannot recommend this game enough to anyone. Sekiro is an absolute dynamite experience, 120%. But even for how good it is, maybe it isn't the easiest to recommend. Again, I know I'm going to get comments from people saying, I've replayed Sekiro like 10 times and I still love it. That's cool. And I, and I wish I could do that. Are you kidding me? Do you think I want to get bored on my third playthrough? I don't. I want to still enjoy your 10th playthrough like some of you out there. And I'm sure you've got a massive cock as well. But you have to see that the vast majority of players, Sekiro has two playthroughs. The first one, which is undeniably magic, and then the second playthrough, which you just go back and cathartically smash every single boss in like two hours. And that's it. <laughs> There's no point going back after that. And that is all because of the combat. So having all these fights is really fun, but all of those fights have to take place somewhere. And Souls games are often praised for their deep and rich worlds, and Sekiro is clearly no exception. Right from the start to the very end, it's hitting you with these outstanding watercolor-esque designs. And something here I especially really like is their confidence in using all of these vibrant colors compared to Souls. Yeah, I know the point of Souls is to be like dark and emo, but still, it stands out as such a sharp and crisp world. What really makes you appreciate this world all the more is how fun it is just to move through it. The player's general move speed has probably more than tripled here, and it's an almost impossible thing that they've pulled off. Having the player dash through all of these lands so quick, but for them to be still able to soak in all of the environment at the same time. Like, like, seriously, that is such a hard thing to pull off. I'm sure many of you who have played this can easily recall how beautiful this game looks. But also many of you haven't ever really stopped and actually looked at it. I mean, I'm not saying that you should. I'm just saying without ever actually looking, the world will still leave its mark on you. And I guess the only way I can explain this is to just say the world's great, <laughs> and we'll leave it at that. Speaking of the movement in Sekiro, the game has doubled down on this lightning quick pace with the grappling hook. Around the world, you see these little grey circles. You press a button and there you go, it's all done. Now, I very much remember on my first Sekiro playthrough, 
seeing this and being like, oh great, well, that looks very niche. I don't think I'll be using that myself too much. But honestly, I was left genuinely surprised that about after an hour or so, how natural it felt to use and implement in your normal movement. I'm sure this is an example which many of you can relate to. It's the first true mini boss fight with the ogre. You get hit by the grab and get thrown off a cliff, but then you clutch the quick grapple straight back into the fight. Now, despite this being a cool gamer moment, the thing which is very easily overlooked here is that in most games, if you give the player so many movement options, when crazy stuff like this happens, it's very easy to forget all your options and how you can save yourself. But in Sekiro, I, I don't know, it just clicks so well to the point where you don't actually even think about it. It's a natural response and, and that is such a good feeling. It's also worth mentioning one last movement option and that's stealth. This is the first FromSoft game to truly implement it and out of this and Elden Ring, Sekiro gives you way more reason to use it due to you being able to get an instant critical attack. And this whole stealth thing can be more than just killing one or two enemies before a fight, like in Elden Ring. I'm talking about if you use your movement and the grapple and you scout out the boss's room before the encounter even begins. You can take down a boss's health bar halfway before the fight even begins. So having said all this, is there anything bad about the world about all this movement? Uh, maybe? I mean, like, maybe if you just don't like over-the-top Japanese vibes, there's kind of no escape from that here. And I guess with all this crazy agile movement, like the combat, it has to demand more perfection. If you don't get it right first time, you're probably dead. But I've got to say, in the interests of trying to answer the question of this video, the answer clearly doesn't lie here. In fact, it's the opposite. This is probably, in fact, the main reason that so many die-hard Sekiro fans keep coming back. I do know some people out there who are utterly obsessed with this game and asking them, what is the main thing that keeps you coming back? The first thing all 12 of them said to me is the world, 100%. And honestly, as far as the world immersion goes, if you still aren't fully convinced, the game is dubbed into fucking French, boys. Case closed. Now, this is a section that I almost didn't include in the video, but the more I thought about it, the more I felt that it's something that needs to be talked about. Something which a lot of players forget or just seem to didn't know is that this game has DLC. Now, usually in my reviews, I don't like talking about DLC because believe it or not, there's probably more people than you think who haven't played any Souls DLC. But Sekiro's DLC is very different. It is a free update and all it does is add boss rematches. This is a very simple addition, but is one of the most requested features in any FromSoft game. I seriously don't know why this didn't come back in Elden Ring, but whatever. The big thing to all this though, is that once you've unlocked a few bosses, you unlock a gauntlet, which is a series of those 10 or so bosses back to back to back. This is not only just straight up fun, it actually gives you little rewards for beating these. You get official in-game skins for your character. And yet again, that is another highly requested DLC feature for the entire Soul series. So what's all that got to do with this review? Well, it's pretty substantial once you relate it back to the previous problems of replayability. Now, if you ever fancy jumping into Sekiro for a good fight, it doesn't have to be this full huge replay. You can just get to the best bits whenever you like. And if you do fancy a bit more than just a quick replay, well, you've got the gauntlets now, which can take up to an hour each, finishing off with a new remixed version of final bosses with improved new moves and AI. This all sounds perfect for fixing this game's replayable problem. Unfortunately though, despite all of this, there are still some problems with the way it's executed. To unlock all of the fun gauntlets on your one save game, you will need to do a total of three new game plus runs of this game. This seems to be again giving you more reasons to replace Sekiro as you'll unlock more DLC having replayed it more. But I, I don't know it just kind of fucking stinks you know. I mean it's like man you just want to jump into some cool gauntlets and before you boot one up like oh wait you have to do a full replay now like 
Okay, yeah, sure, I'll do that. Oh, oh, uh, hang on. The next one is another new game plus after that. I think during all these new game plus runs, you're not even thinking about enjoying these replays. You're just probably thinking, oh man, I really wish I was doing the gauntlets right now. I mean, I understand why it has to be this way because the bosses are exclusive to certain endings and the game wants you to unlock those bosses through gameplay before getting them as rematches. But honestly, really... <laughs> Who gives a shit? Just give me the cool bosses for goodness sake. And before we close this section, again, don't get me wrong here. This is free DLC, giving you some of the most fun content with no filler. It is absolutely brilliant. And I wish games like Elden Ring and whatever had this treatment. But I also can't ignore that in an effort to bring some people back to replay this game, they've made unlocking that replayable content extremely tedious. And I'm willing to bet that a lot of people who've played Sekiro haven't done all Sekiro's gauntlets because they can't be asked doing three new game plus runs. And I know that's true because I'm one of those people. I cannot be fucking asked sitting down and unlocking all of the gauntlets. Maybe I might be the only one who thinks that though. I might be projecting pretty hard here, but fuck you, I do all I want, it's my review. So we've ended up at the conclusion of this video a bit earlier than I thought. I mean, when I was planning the script, I had like another two or so extra sections put in. But really, to be honest, they don't really need to be in. I mean, I can talk about how cool the story is, but I'm only ever going to say it's great and then say it's got nothing to do with answering the point of this video. The reason I think no one recommends Sekiro anymore is the combat and replayability. And it's a weird one to talk about as if it's a bad thing because the combat, in my opinion, is the best combat we have ever had in a Souls game, maybe in games of all time. But then the problem is once you've beat the game once, you can't unremember what you've learned and you'll never be able to play the game the same way again. That is all assuming of course that you can get over that excruciating difficulty bump and I know a lot of you out there have only like half beaten Sekiro and I see that comment all the time and it's hard to feel like jumping back in to Sekiro after that because like, oh what if I forget all my skills like, I have to start again and when you think about it that way it is the best combat but it's so hard to recommend, but that doesn't mean it shouldn't be. I will stand by and recommend this game because what you're getting here is maybe the finest tuned and sharpened game you will play. It is, however, just the one playthrough and a lot of people out there do not want to spend $60 on one playthrough. You are getting an absolute dynamite playthrough here. I cannot promise you that enough, but maybe that's just what kills it before it even gets a chance. A lot of people out there no longer want to spend $60 on like one playthrough. It's not like other Souls games where you can come back to it and as I said before, okay, I'm going to make a PvP build this time. Like no, with Sekiro, there isn't any of that to get here. You get what you get and you move on. And it seems a lot of people did after playing this. And what really sucks is that I'm saying that as if it's a negative thing. Maybe it's just the way video games are going now. It's like they have to strive for this never ending gameplay loop of constant new things to do. And these one time player games are just going out of style now. For me at least, that is why no one recommends Sekiro anymore. It really is just the one playthrough, but it's exceptional, incomparable and totally unique. You better believe it'll be the best Souls playthrough of your entire life. What's the matter, Stray? Nothing left to lose. Well, would you?